Hello and welcome to another edition of Beyond the Pitch. I'm Christian Jack. Before we get to my next guest, I want to thank so many of you who have all been in touch with us to say how much you enjoyed the last episode of the series with Canadian men's national team player Stefan Estacchio, who joined me to tell some great stories and allow you to get to know him better. After all, that really is the purpose of these. A reminder, we have over now 15 of these with players from the Canadian men's national team squad who have made the FIFA World Cup in 2022 at Qatar. And you can watch all of those on our YouTube channel and, of course, listen to them on our newsroom podcast feed. Estacchio had never really done an interview like that before, and the same can be said for my next guest, Junior Hoylett, who, despite being one of the best Canadian players in the world, and despite holding some significant Premier League status for many, many years, for a Canadian in indeed, he remains relatively out of the spotlight when it comes to the new cycle of soccer in Canada. So let's change that. Junior is relatively shy, but in this episode opens a lot about fascinating topics. We talk about him as a young boy from Brampton, moving to the northwest of England when he was barely a teenager. Keys to how he made that work, his success in the biggest league in the world. We talk about his four Premier League relegations, plus his promotions too, playing at Wembley, lifting a trophy, working under iconic managers like Sam Allardyce, of course, Harry Redknapp, Neil Warnock, find out his favorite. And of course, we talk about his beloved Canada, making a World Cup against his former, basically, Jamaican team that he could have played for himself. And of course, why that was his team in his heart with obviously connection with his parents. And why a move potentially, potentially to Toronto FC would be a dream. Of course, we get into that as well. All this and so much more with, is an unprecedented interview with an underrated Canadian sports star. Enough of me. Sit back and enjoy my chat with Brampton's own Junior Hoyland. Junior, fantastic to see you. And uh, This is a chat that I've wanted to do with you for a long time, so it's great to sit down with you and have a chat about your career. How are you doing? All good, all good. Uh, thanks for having me. Just uh, My offseason right now, so just trying to keep in shape, I'm ready for a camp for the national team. Yes, the national team camp is certainly coming up. I don't think you ever have to worry about staying in shape. We're going to get to uh, your season and everything so far, but how has life? How has life changed for you since the qualification process and you guys have made the World Cup? Well, it's still the same. It's still, it's still surreal to me. It hasn't really hit me. It's something right, right now, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just a major, uh, major achievement for not only me, but for the country as well, and for the, the group of brothers we play, play with. Uh, with the national team, so it's a massive achievement, and you can see, you can see what's it brought to the to Canada and the the Canadian football, uh, soccer. It's really put eyes on everybody in Canada right now. So it's a it's a good thing to be a part of, and just can't wait, can't wait for the World Cup. Man. I bet you can't. You're going to be fantastic and much needed, by the way. What was that like? Obviously. Uh, we'll get to the game in a second, but when you went back, obviously you spent so much time of your life now in England. When you went back as clinching the World Cup, what were your teammates asking you at Reading? What were your friends talking about? How how is the Canada on their radar? Yeah, of course, they, of course, everybody make, making it to the World Cup. Uh, everybody's on notice now, so when I came back, everybody was delighted for me, uh, especially at Reading. Everybody was uh, congratulating me. I was really happy, happy for what I achieved as a player. And, uh, and well, as well as what country achieved, because nobody really thought Canada would have qualified, but they seen how we done, how we qualified in the first place, and really got the respect from from Canada now. So uh, it really put everybody on alert now. And it's it's a it's a blessing, really. It is. I've talked to so many of your teammates, and every one of them has been a pleasure, by the way, to talk to, just like yourself. But they said you said then nobody really believed Canada, and that's been a theme, right? Where, when did you believe? When did you start to really believe that, that it could happen? Was there a specific moment, a specific game, a specific team talk? But when did it, when do you believe that, that that route was planted for you? No, I always believed that Canada would qualify for a World Cup, especially when John Herdman came in and he brought in uh, uh, structure and system. You could really see the shift in everybody's mentality and he really helps everybody get on the same board and from not only the players but to the staff and you can really see the change in environment. And then uh, from once we started gelling and playing together, you could feel it. I think um, the journey leading into the qualification with some ups and downs, which helped us as well. Uh, some down moments and uh, some games where we thought we should have won, where we lost. 
uh, helped us to achieve what we are today. So we took everything in stride, and I think it was meant to be. And we just worked hard for it, and it was, uh, I think it was a journey that was meant to be. How we came across uh, a few ups and downs, so it's a major achievement, like I said, and that's just a blessing, man. I love the smile on your face because when you talk about some of the games that you lost that you should have won, is is it right to bring up Mexico Gold Cup? You were there. Do they stick with you those games? And and was there a positive out of that that you took that team that far that really ignited your qualification process to think, hey, look, if we can beat these guys, we can beat anybody. Yeah, there's a few games, especially even in that tournament, the, the game against America, where we lost when they scored in the first minute and we dominated the game and really showed how much. Canada has evolved how we could go out there and dominate uh, against a group of uh, men that really, really supposed to be kings of CONCACAF, really. And we went out there and dominated and we was unlucky to get the win. And then to go to the Mexico game where uh, we also dominated and we should have came out with a win. It really, I think that loss helped us going into the qualifications with extra boost and extra confidence. That, you know, we, we tasted a little bit of what we can do and it pushed us and each player, even the young players that played in the World Cup, it helped them as well in uh, through those moments and going away to Azteca and uh, getting a result and going away to America and getting a result. It shows what what we are capable of and I think those those moments where we lost, but we the way we lost is something that really helped us point with the qualifications. Yeah, yeah, you became a resilient team, no? I mean, I think about right away how many times you, you went behind early and then came back to recover that. And I think right away that Honduras game at home, that first match, uh, you come on at half time and you made an enormous difference in that game. And, and you know, right away, that, you know, that that goes from, you know, a, a, a loss to a, a, an achievable point and then something you think we can build on, right? Is that what is that how you looked at that game? Yeah, of course. Uh, that game was, I think... Uh, also, one of the turning points that shows that the team we have now has uh, multiple weapons that we could pull off from the bench or uh, people that starting and hitting from every angle now, the, which Canada never had during the year. So it also gives the team uh, confidence going into games that, yeah, we have different amount of strengths where we could hurt teams and uh, shows how we fight for each other. And it gives the team confidence going to the game knowing that we're going into win and not just to compete. I, I spoke to Alfonso Davies about this, but you missed a not a large chunk, but a, a little bit of a chunk of the World Cup qualifying campaign, games four, five, six, and then the Edmonton leg because of injury. What what's that like as somebody who's living in England, trying to get fit, has got a job to do, you're playing in the championship, games are happening in the middle of the night. Are you up? Are you watching them? Are you checking your phone? Are you up every hour? What's that like? I'll make sure I'm up for those games uh I set my alarm and I was make sure I'm up, out of bed and we're ready to watch those games. But yeah, uh, I remember those games, the ones in uh, Edmonton, and just seeing the the fan base in that in that in that uh, weather, especially was it minus? What was it minus? Almost minus twenty, wasn't it? It was cold, man. <laughs> I see in the whole stadium and everybody behind the 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 my brothers and the country. It just shows how far Canada has come and it's just a blessing me waking up here at 12 o'clock in the morning to go and watch and support my brothers is uh, something that I wanted to be out there but I knew me watching from home also I felt a part of it so uh, that's what this group is about um, we have people supporting from all over and just rooting for each and other each and every one of us to get uh to get the, the best of each and one of us. So that's what this new Canada is about and what we stand for now. Everybody's on the same path and everybody wants the best for one another. Yeah, you were able to fa- thankfully join the squad soon after. Talk to me about the Hamilton game, the United States, you come in and then obviously, you know, we, we just had another lockdown here in Canada at the time and they allowed a partial stadium, but it felt like it was full and you come on and then you do that big nutmeg that Daniil went crazy about on the sidelines. and <laughs> It was a special moment, no? Yeah, of course, man. of course, uh, especially uh, playing in front of a, a crowd where it was a uh, partial lockdown and they made it feel like lockdown didn't exist uh, the way the stadium was rocking against uh, a side of America, strong side of America. 
to do what we've done at home it shows what what we're about uh, the resilience we have and it's also credit to the fans coming up which it really puts a uh, uh play like the 12th man and give us extra boost going into those games but that yeah, was a special moment uh for for me as well as for Canada to to get a, a result at home against America in qualification so that was a special moment that <laughs> That don't make to see the deal's reaction is uh, something I'll never forget. It went viral. <laughs> it was a big moment, man. A, a, a lots of individual moments we had for Canada on the run, and that was a pretty special moment as well. Uh, you, you talk about it being a big moment for you against against the United States. You know, it's. I think you're so so well versed to speak about this in terms of like the suffering, no, the suffering that came so long before the the, the joy. You know, there was so much suffering. And, and, you know, even when you started coming in and think about the Gold Cups and the, the struggles that you guys had, you, you waited your turn for moments like that to just make it a bit more sweeter, surely. Of course, uh, when you went to programming, you go playing against teams that's lower ranking and fighting and scrapping and playing in uh, bad environments. To play in games like that, it's, it's a joy. And to see how far the nations come in, uh, what the nation is producing player-wise as well. It's crazy. And so joy to be a part of something that's special. And then to go and be dominant in the CONCACAF region uh, against the big teams like Mexico and USA and see how they fare us now. It's a, it's a great it's a great achievement, great shift in a, in a short space of time as well. So it's just a credit to what Canada's about. And I believe Canada always had it and to bring it out. and how we've done it at a bigger scale is uh, something for me. And I know other players as teams probably suffered more than I have. And uh, me, Lance, been there before and they suffered. They've seen a, a major shift. So you could, if you ask them, they'll tell you the same thing. They, they really, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to come in and play with your brothers and play in this environment, what we're playing in right now. I see the picture of, of Toronto right behind you. I don't know what Canada Canada means to you, G- Junior. How excited are you when you get that call to come home? Oh, of course, of course. Uh, it's a uh, open moves. It's, uh, it's an honor to play for your country and to play with a group of players. Uh, the brothers I play with now, it's, it's, uh, it's a joy every day when I'm in camp. Uh, it's just training and laughing and just in the environment with the brothers. It's, it's like a different world different world that you want to be a part of every time and you want it to last forever so I just try to make the most of every moment with uh with my brothers out there so it's always a joy when I get called up for the national team I love it talking of joys you know I was there with you know the sidelines for that game against Jamaica and I I just had an enormous smile on my face when you scored that goal man what was that like <laughs> oh that was, was crazy that that day was it's crazy I, I didn't even get a good sleep that night because I was so excited ready to play and then when I woke up and I see those snow, I was like, yeah, for sure, we're winning, <laughs> we're winning today. <laughs> but uh, the whole game, I was just enjoying myself that game. Uh, uh, I just felt from the moment the whistle blew, we was ready for them. And uh, we were just playing with freedom. And you can see how we played and how we all uh, gelled. And I uh, was just excited to make history for 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 the country in our home soil in Toronto in front of family and friends so it was just a joy and then when I scored it was just like icing on the cake uh it's a moment I'll never forget and something that I'll cherish forever it was quite fitting though no I mean for those who don't know your journey obviously Jamaica is a massive part of your family heritage you were eligible to play for them at one time as well at a quiet moment did that strike you as like there's some some higher power here certainly looking over me and thinking what a crazy story this is yeah exactly I was just speaking to, to my friend about that the other day is crazy how we qualified against Jamaica, where my family's from, and uh, the way the way we did it at home <laughs> on home soil is something special that you would never think of, and uh, the way we did it is something special as well. And you can see, see the shift uh, years ago when we played against Jamaica. You see more green and yellow in the crowd than than red, and this time I, I didn't see one piece of green and yellow in the in the crowd. And, the stadium was rocking full of red, and it's a, it's a major support for the nation. As he could see in how how the the culture in the in the country has shifted and the way we did it in a short space of time, 
uh, everybody that's rocking green and yellow is now rocking red. So <laughs> it's, it's a it's a moment that's special for not only me but for my family as well. So that's a it's a major major moment for me in my career. I can I can only imagine how proud your parents were of you. Um... There's a lot of discussion right now talking to kind of Jamaica. Let me get your point on this for a second. There's a lot of discussion right now about dual nationalities and how hard it is for people to decide at such a young age. Personally, how difficult was that for you? Because I know your journey, I mean, we'll get to it in a second, but going to England as a teenager, you, I'm sure you feel very English at times now. Um, and obviously the ability to play for Jamaica at times, it looked like you, you know, you're going to get called up there. How hard is that as a young man to, to decide? It's just, you're only allowed to play for one when many of us, me included, you know, have different nationalities and feel like you, you connected to so many different countries, Junior. Yeah, of course. It's, a, it's not an easy decision, especially at a young age. Uh, it's just something that you have to feel it. What do you feel at the time? So for me, uh, something that I thought about over the years and I'm sure at the time, my family would have wanted me to play for Jamaica and then and see how see how they were playing at the time. They were doing good at the time. So mm. it, was, it wasn't an easy decision for me, but at the time I felt uh, I grew up in Canada. All my friends are based in Canada. Uh, my family's based in Canada. Uh, Canada is what where I learned how to play play the game of soccer. So I think it was only right for me to to help bring the nation at the time, excel the nation and the program to where it is today. Very well said, and boy, are we thankful you made that decision. Let me just tell you that. Um, uh, you know what was that like though as a as a youngster? That you know you're not you're a high school kid. You make that decision to go to the northwest of England. I know it very well. I grew up there myself to, to Blackburn and, and, and give a, you know, give up, you know, your home. That must be really difficult as a young, as a young boy. Yeah, of course. Um, I remember the first time I got started, it was 10, 10, I was 10. And I went on trial for a few years before I made a decision. And they, they, they wanted me to go a year earlier, but I didn't feel, I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel ready to go over it. At that age, but then, as I kept going back and forth and staying longer over the summer and getting a taste of the environment, it made me realize something that I really wanted to do is, is to be a professional footballer. And uh, it's uh, it wasn't an easy decision. Something uh, my friends and family helped me through the time. Uh, I remember sitting down uh, throughout the summer thinking about it until I finally made a decision that yeah, I want to go over. And, at least try it. I know. I remember speaking with my older brother. And he wanted me to go over and at least try it. I don't have no regrets, and uh, I'm thankful to have people around me that could give me uh, strong opinions, even though they might think it wasn't. They didn't want me to do it at the time, but they they're looking out for my best interest at heart. So I'm thankful for for having people around me that could I could count on, and it's something I'm fortunate because not a lot of people have. Uh, friends or uh, father figures that could uh, help them and make these kind of decisions. So, yeah, it was a, it wasn't an easy decision, and so it was the, one of the hardest. My first year was one of the hardest year, uh, being over there in a new environment. Of course, you miss family and friends and get homesick, and that's something that was that was hard to transition, especially the first year. But as I continued and pushed myself. Uh, it became easier, and then you could see your your development in the in the on the pitch as well. So it's something it's something that you have to really want and be determined to to become a professional footballer to make a decision, especially at a young age. Fascinating, mate. I mean, I know we got lots of people watching these shows, young players that just listened to the last three minutes of that in, that, that answer. That's just all the inspiration they need. I got so much admiration for you and the mental resilience and strength that you must have had to go through as a teenager. Uh, and it's not a straight line, is it? Like you, you're, you're trying to get to play for Blackburn and all of a sudden you get diverted to Germany, right? Oh, sorry, we need to get this to sort out the work permits and all of that. What, what was that like to go there and play? I mean, you played for two fantastic clubs and I'm sure the experience you look back now as being really um, you know, fulfilling. But at the time, as a youngster, that must have been a difficult one as well. Yeah, of course. Um, well, uh, when I first moved to England at 13, I was told 
after four years, I would get my residency and be able to play professional. But then the rules changed and I wasn't uh, eligible for that anymore. And then I had to move, I had to go on loan abroad in order to, to win a work permit to come back to play for Blackburn in England. Uh, at the time, uh, of course, nothing's easy, but I had my, my, my dad and my brother there with me at the time. So it was, it was easier moving from England to Germany than from Canada to England. So it was an easy transition. But at that time, at 17, you know what you want and you, you know what you're there for. And that's just to, to learn and uh, be, uh, try to be the best that you be and learn as much as you can at the sport. So, and at the time, uh, at 17, I wasn't, I was just training. I wasn't playing any games because I wasn't eligible. And then when he told me I could go alone and play games, it's something I wanted to do. So, mm. so I went over to Germany uh, for the first week and just to get a taste of it. And I, I was happy with it. Of course, when you, as a young kid, when you think you're going to a different country where you don't know the language, you, you fear of uh, not gelling in and nothing. But Germany was a great experience. They opened me, they welcomed me with open arms. Uh, and then most of them spoke English, which is also a bonus for me. But yeah, it was, it was a great experience and something I would recommend any young player to go abroad and learn different style of, and different, uh, a different view of, of, of the game as well. It helps you and your development and uh, yeah, also to learn from other cultures and other nationalities, other styles of game, it helps you to become a better player all around. So it was a great experience for me and it's something uh, I'll never uh, never forget. Yeah, I see Pad Bourne, obviously, St. Pauli, great clubs as well to play for as well with tremendous history. So you come back to Blackburn and you really hit the ground running, right? Like I remember covering the league here in England, uh, you know, covering the English Premier League here in Canada and, you know, you were a star over here at that point. I mean, you are now, but they, you, everyone was talking about Junior Hoyler. Um, you know, you're scoring goals. You're playing against the best teams in the world. You're on, you know, you know millions of people are watching you. Uh, what's that like then on the human side? Suddenly the press is all over you. You're reading your name everywhere. Is that, is that a humbling experience? Is it a difficult experience? What's that like as, 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 a, as, a, as a superstar? People are even talking about playing, you playing for England at that time, I remember. Yeah, for me, it's just a dream come true to make your your debut in the Premier League and it's something that I was I was always focused for and I always I always wanted. So when I got the chance to come back and play for Blackburn, I just really wanted to work hard and try to make my debut. That was <laughs> that was the main thing. And when I made my debut it was Man City, I was just I was just over the moon shell shocked. Uh, I remember warming up beside Tevez on the sideline. I was just staring at him for a while. We did it. I couldn't believe I was there. So at a young age, it's just, for me, I just wanted to work hard and just show uh, not only my teammates and my coach at the time when I was a girl, but also uh, everybody that in, in England, the English Premier League, that I could, I could live up to the expectations and really compete at that level. So for the, for the first year, it was just me wanting to go out there and, and compete against people I've been watching when I was growing up, playing against the Arsenal's training at Old Trafford. It was a really, it was really, it was really a monumental moment for me to be able to achieve that as a young player. You spent three years at Blackburn. You'd eventually get relegated. We'll talk about getting relegated from to, from the Premier League because unfortunately it happened to you far too often. But that's not just down to you. That's down to the, the clubs that you were at. But when you were at Blackburn Junior, what was your favorite moments? Is there a game you think about more than anything else? There's a few, there's a few, there's a few uh, moments from scoring my first goal. Uh, I guess was from, and I remember, I remember one year where we stayed up on the last day against uh, Wolverhampton. I think that was one of the bizarre, one of the bizarre games, but especially against I remember we went up three 0 at halftime, and we was in a dressing room thinking it was over, but then they came out and scored two quick goals, and. Uh, the last 20 minutes, we both were safe, so nobody was pressing them. Nobody really stayed in the old half. And it was a bit bizarre because nobody wanted to press anybody or try to see their goal. So for the last 20 minutes, everybody was just in their formations, just passing the ball to one another. It was crazy because most of us, they knew, they heard from 
the sidelines that both of us will see as a result of the other game. So it was our moment and being able to be a part of that and also score in that game is uh, one, of, one, of, one of the greatest moments. <laughs> I love that. You talk about your goals. You're a bit of a highlight reel yourself. I mean, goals of the month awards and different, you know, smashing them in from outside the box. In fact, I would go on and say this, and it's not just because I'm talking to you. I've said this before. I think you strike a ball better than any Canadian player I've ever seen. And I mean that, honestly, the way that you strike it. Where does that come from? Did you get that early? Or as you work on it every day? Uh, something something I work on. Uh, something I've been working on as well. Not only in my early careers, but throughout my career. Uh, just more of the technique, just to try to find that sweet spot. And uh, it's more, because sometimes when you put too much power, you can't control it. So once you hit that sweet spot, you know when you hit it and leave your foot, you know you know where it's going so it's something you have to take time off in everything you do either it's dribbling or or long passing or crossing it's something you really have to work on it's nothing nothing comes natural or easy uh even if you have the natural ability you still have to work on it you can ask back when you he'll practice uh countless amount of times a day just uh getting that repetition in so, so when it comes to the game it's easy the sweet spot. I love it. Now, a lot of your Canadian teammates have told me just how much they appreciate the camaraderie. You call it brothers, the brotherhood, the dressing room that you have, that it's real, that it's genuine, it's authentic. Uh, and then some of them will tell me they appreciate more because there's been times in their career where it's simply been the opposite. It's been, for lack of a better word, almost a dysfunctional disaster in some areas. I bring that up and I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I want you to tell me about your first year at QPR because you get relegated at Blackburn, you go to QPR and they sign basically a whole new team. You know, it, it, everyone's coming in. There's all this money thrown in it. I think of Julio Cesar and Basingua and Genus and Granero and yourself. And there's all these guys coming in. You think QPR are here to stay. And then it just hits the bottom pretty quickly. What was that like? What was that dressing room like? All those personalities. And, and what's it like in a year where things don't go well and, and you get relegated from the Premier League? Yeah, that year was... It was crazy, only because it's the amount of amount of people coming in and out that year really couldn't find a, a cohesive or authentic authentic uh, relationship with anyone, and I couldn't find a genuine uh, uh, style with or connection with anyone to bring on the pitch. So it was hard, not only as a young player, but I think for everyone. If, uh, amount of players we signed at, at one time and uh for us to gel it needed time. I think um it was a bit it's a rough patch during the season. And then we'll go through a good patch where we think oh we're gonna we're gonna survive and then another rough patch comes up. And the Premier League is especially it's one of the hardest in the in the in the world, if not the hardest. You really need to have a uh understanding with one another and uh you need that time to build and especially when you change manager uh, during the season as well. And then you have a uh, new a manager with new style of play and new views of how he wants the team to play. And then he brings in his, his own players. It's really, it's really hard as a young player and it's not just a young player, everybody. And unfortunately, that's the result we got to get relegated. So I think it was a lot of ups and downs and you sit in the across the room and you see big names coming in at the same time. You think you think it's going to work, but unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. But Harry Redknapp comes in and eventually, you, it's like all in football, I guess, in metaphor for life, you bounce back, right? You go down, you get that playoff final. Um, I remember that game. I remember watching you, 90,000 people at Wembley. By the way, you're one of the best players, but I think you guys got to get... Didn't you guys get a, a player sent off and it was back to the wall and then Zamora scores right at the very end? Talk me through what, what what's that like as a group, for, again, as brothers, you work hard to get a promotion and then literally almost with the last kick or the last shot, I think your only shot in the match, you bang it in and you and you get promoted to the Premier League. What's that feeling like? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, especially, I just remember uh, walking out into Wembley and you just you could feel the atmosphere. It was just shaking, shaking, shaking. It was crazy. It was crazy. And then to have my family in the stands as, as well. It's a great moment. But then we go up man down and you think, oh no, our backs are against the wall. And I think that's a moment uh, in QPR career. See, everybody was for each other and we really dug it up. And uh, 
defended for about 35 minutes. And then that one chance we 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 needed, and uh, obviously more uh, put it put it away and become the hero for the, for the team to get us promoted back to the Premier League is a is a is a, it's a special moment, and I think that shows how important you need a brotherhood or or a relationship between one another to to grind out those times. And when your back's against the wall, you can count on. Uh, player beside you or behind you, knowing they'll give you 100%, uh, not only for you, but for the team to get a result needed at a time. And uh, that shows uh, something, shows what uh, brotherhood and uh, relationships in the team and understanding for one another can uh, help you get through certain situations in, in the game of sport. I love it. And again, one of those, another reasons why I wanted to talk to you again is to just increase the awareness of what you've done, man. Like as a Canadian sportsman, I don't think it gets talked enough enough. You've walked up them steps. You've lifted that trophy at Wembley. Now, you know, you played, I think your second all time in Premier League appearances for Canada behind Thomas Radzinski, second all time in Premier League goals behind Thomas Radzinski and assists. I mean, I don't know if Premier League exists in your future, but if it doesn't, I know you've got four relegations in there. That's probably four too many, you would tell me. Uh, but but. How do you look back at your Premier League and, and, and the time that you spent in that league? Uh, like, okay, minus the relegations. <laughs> I think it was far too many. But minus the relegations, uh, it's a major achievement for not only me, but as a Canadian, you don't really see too many Canadians breaking into the Premier League and uh, showing uh, what they're about and uh, creating chances and uh, getting scoring screamers. Uh, I think it's a major achievement for not only me but for Canada. It shows what talent we have here and what we have to produce. And I'm sure I'm not going to be the the only Canadian that's going to be uh, playing in the Premier League or breaking records. I'm sure there'll be someone coming up in the in the ranks that will score more than me and Rizitsky as well. So I make many more appearances. So it just shows uh, what Canada is about and what we have to offer. And I'm grateful to be a part of that, to, to make that achievement and play in the, one of the world's biggest stage. A few more minutes. You've been so gracious with your time. During that time, you've also played under some legendary managers. I think of Redknapp. I think of Warnock. I think of Allardyce. You, know, you must have some amazing stories one day to tell us about these guys. What, who, any, any favorites amongst those? Oh, so yeah, so like I said, there's some, some great managers I've played under and uh, Everybody had their own unique way of uh, managing and style of play. Uh, but for me, I think one of the most, uh, I think Warnock was a, a special manager for me and where I played under. Uh, he really gave me the freedom to go out there and so and uh, know when I'm on the ball to go express myself. But he also uh, believed in me to and helped me. Get the dirty work and to defend, and you know his style of football is defend first and then attack second. So, uh, we're, you can see the way I played on him and what I achieved under him was one of the great moments. And uh, I can tell you many stories about him. Uh, but he's a great man manager as well. He'll, if you give him all, all you got on the pitch, he'll give you what you need off the pitch. So it's a special moment playing under him. And, Something uh, I'll cherish. I, I can only imagine. I, I, I can I can see him now with his arm around you, right? He's that kind of manager. You no, know? go, go on, Junior. Go, on, you can do this for me. He's that kind of guy who just you just want to do everything for him at that point. Almost like a, a father slash grandfather figure at that point. Yeah, it's true. Like you could ask loads of players. Uh, they'll run. They'll run to a brick wall for him. The way he he's a great human being as well as a manager. So uh, he was always honest with players, even if. Uh, some players are not getting the, the minutes they want. You always uh, try to help them, either if it's to help them get more minutes or to go on loan so they can get more minutes. But he was never one of the managers that will try to jeopardize your career. He's always there to help you. And, uh, he might not see uh, you making it in his team, but he'll always make sure that his door is open. If you need anything, he'll be there to help you if you can. So. Uh, that's one of the qualities he has. He knows how to man manage, and uh, it shows when you you can man manage a player. Uh, they give you the 
the performance you need on the pitch. So it's just that trust and the belief he gets from each and every player. And it shows throughout his career how many promotions he's won, uh, not only uh, the way he's won, especially everybody doubted him in a certain situation. Even at Cardiff, nobody thought we would have got that promotion that year. But the way we played and the way we played for one another, he really helped us bring that cohesion and that brotherhood to uh, get through certain games where people thought we would never, never get the wins. And at the end of the season, we got that automatic promotion, which was something uh, special again throughout my career. I remember it well, covering it for TSN at the time, the Premier League on TSN. You guys got the promotion. It was wonderful for us as a story as well. L- let me ask you this. What about John Herdman? Obviously, you know John very well. Um, he's been linked recently in the media to actually a couple of your former clubs, Queen's Park Rangers and Blackburn Rose. I know you've seen it in the media. You don't want to lose him. I'm sure Canada doesn't want to lose him and, and, and likely he would stay. But if somebody called you up and nobody really is better to speak about this, I don't think from a Canadian point of view than you with the amount of minutes that you played in the championship and said, what do you think about John Herman? What would you tell him in terms of his style to go into the championship and be a club manager one day, which I'm sure he, asked, he aspires to do? Yeah, so he has all the qualities and uh the way he he assembles his team and the way he wants his team to play, uh, he could he could easily manage in championship, not the Premier League. Uh, he knows he has the qualities of, of certain managers I've played with. Uh, the style and the tactics. He's really a great tactician. The way he, he really studies and works hard behind the scenes, it's knowing that he covers all bases going into each match. That he's prepared for any situation. You can see. Uh, what he's done for Canada. Uh, he's really worked hard behind the scenes to study each position and, and know where to hurt each opposition. And uh, that's one of his, his qualities. He's a, he's a, he knows how to get the best out of each player. And each he has numerous amount of formations to play against different style of teams. So I think he'll, he'll, he'll be flying in championship, but not currently. Fantastic. Uh, what about you, Junior? What's next for you? Obviously, you just had the season in the championship again. You've been, you know, with Reading, yet another great year, played with a lot of minutes. Um, the contract's coming to an end this summer, but and uh, options are all open. But are you open to listening to pretty much any work? How do we get you over here, man? Playing in MLS, that's what I want to see. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, uh, I'll be a free agent in a few months. So right now, my main focus is going into camp and getting a minutes and showing people that I'm, I'm fit and uh, of course, one day I'd love to come back home and play in the MLS and play. My dream is to play in Toronto, of course, back home in front of my family. So uh, I never I never played professional football for a club team uh, back home and the way the MLS is going and the way Toronto FC and other Canadian teams are going, uh, the league is only getting bigger and better. So uh, for me, I'd, I'd love to play in the MLS one day. And you talk about Canada soccer and the culture now. We also have the Canadian Premier League as well. You were 13 and you went abroad at that time. There wasn't a pathway at all at that point. But how big is it now for young Canadians to not only have the aspirations to go to MLS, but go? You know, we're already seeing players play regularly in the Canadian Premier League and having that pathway to go further forward. How big is that for this country? That just shows the way the country's going, not only on a national team, but on a national scale, but on a club scale. It's really going in the right direction. You can see... The league is getting better each year that comes, and there's really some talent coming through that league, and that shows the way kind of the soccer is going. So it's a it's an honor for uh, the nation to have a league set up, uh, especially for the young players and a different pathway. Where at the time players were forced to go abroad or go through uh, the college route to get to try get a, a career out of the games uh, of soccer. So it's a it's great for young players and great for Canada soccer as well. Fantastic. Well said. Next time you hear my man, you could be my guest. We'll go to a CPL game and watch it together. Um, before I let you go, a couple of uh, ra- rapid fire questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, what is it you miss the most, uh, aside from family, of course? What is it you miss the most about Canada when you're away from it? Besides family? Uh, does, does my mom's cooking count? <laughs> but that's what, that's what they got the most uh, Mom's cooking, and uh, that's probably one of the best, the main thing I would say. Love that. <laughs> I love, I love that answer. Sure, 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 love that. Um, 
What's the best stadium you've ever played in? That's a good question. That's uh, a good question. Um, I would have to say Wembley is probably the, the best atmosphere. Uh, and one of the best stadiums um, to, to get a win and get promotion. Uh, playing at Wembley is, is crazy. Something that's a special moment for me as well. So I'll probably say Wembley, if not Wembley, uh, Alliance Reno. I remember playing there, scoring there as well. So it's a, that was a class, class arena to be playing. Yeah, pretty good choices there. Um, who's the toughest opponent you've ever played against, either individually or, uh, you know, on the wing or a defender, or you've looked at that player and he goes, he's just absolutely battered us today. Who's, who's the best player you've ever played against, toughest opponent? I would say... That's a good question. I would say... Um, opponent... The best team would be Mass City. And I'd either say Sterling or De Bruyne. Uh, Sterling's his movement and his, his, his awareness of the ball is a big eye he'll uh, move and then if he has the brain of just picking up passes uh, couldn't get close to any, not any of them so I'll say one of them too Kevin De Bruyne are you going to play against him again in Qatar are you looking forward to that? yeah of course of course we're ready for him in Qatar <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I love it um is there a certain goal you always look back on? You, you check your own highlights, or you think in your mind you play over again. What's your favorite goal you've ever scored? One of my favorite goals probably be, uh, probably be when I played for Cardiff against Wolves. Uh, the curler off the bar in is special because it was it was also the, the the match winner. I think that was to score a goal like that. And to to win the matches is on TV as well. <laughs> it was a it was a great moment, and for Canada probably be against Costa Rica and the Gold Cup, uh, the the lava over the keeper, and to get the win of course, and to get that's the first time I've been a part of a team in Gold Cup to get to reach the semifinals, and to so to get that goal in quarterfinals to get the to help the team excel to the same finals. It's a great moment for me. Two, two great answers. I got a smile on my face. I covered both games. I remember <laughs> them really well. The, the, the game against Wolves. I mean, it always is sweeter when it hits the woodwork and goes in as well. Yeah, I think. It, makes it, it makes it a lot better. <laughs> I, I agree. And that Costa Rica game, I'll forever remember covering that, that you absolutely battered up. That was the day where a lot of people thought, here comes Canada. We can beat the Giants of this CONCACAF region. Um, listen, you've been absolutely brilliant with your time, man. This has been fantastic. I guess we should end on Qatar. No, like this is uh, wherever you're going to be playing. This is, doesn't get any better. How how excited you wake up at night thinking about it, dreaming. I mean, you've got De Bruyne coming. You've got Modric coming. You've got the world staring at you. This is going to be a special occasion for you. Yeah, of course. It's something each kid dreams about at a young age. And to actually, to actually know you're part of it and you're, you're, the, your team is in the ballots and ready in the group stages picked out and everything uh, sometimes I still pinch myself and uh, something I can't wait and just working hard to make sure I'm there to be a part of history well you, you'll be there uh, there's no doubt about that in my mind and hopefully you'll be playing lots of minutes in the build, build up you are absolutely pivotal to Canada's chances as I said no one strikes the ball better we don't have another player like you so we're thankful for you and we're thankful you chose Canada and I can't thank you enough for this 45 minutes of your time man it's been brilliant I see that Toronto behind you I know you're uh, half English and half Canadian almost these days with Jamaican in there as well I'm, I'm glad England has taken care of you but one day we'll take much care of you back here as well wherever it may take you June you're a, you're a Canadian gem we thank you so much for everything my man appreciate it, appreciate it.